Good day. We're going to teach you how to how we adjust valves on a lot of cylinder head. We're in the middle of another project right now, and that's why everything else is pulled off. But we're going to take the time to do a quick video on how to adjust the valves the way we do it. We don't do it quite the way the manual says, so it'll be a little bit different. The parts that you need to remove to do your valve adjustment is you need to remove your air cleaner assembly and your valve cover. You don't need to remove anything else. That's just off because of what else we're doing. If you consult the manual, it'll tell you the steps needed to go to do your valve train adjustment. First thing you need to do is have your engine at top dead center on your piston, as well as your camshaft at top dead center, which you can do by lining up the little divot on the back along with this stud. Once you have your engine at top dead center, you will adjust valve number eight and valve number six first. Once you have valve number eight and valve number six adjusted, you turn the engine one quarter, to one quarter turn on the camshaft, so half at the crank, and then you will adjust valve number four and valve number seven. Then another quarter turn of the cam, and you adjust valves number one and valve number three. Another quarter turn of the cam, and you adjust valves number five and valves number two. And once you have all of them adjusted, you can put her back together, and you're done. Now the manual says the proper way to adjust your valve clearance is with a feeler gauge set between 0.14 mil and 0.17 mil and you will insert it in between your rocker and your camshaft lobe and as long as you can insert it in between with just a slight bit of drag your valve is adjusted to the proper amount and if it's either too tight or too loose you adjust it using this little nut bolt here accordingly. I don't like doing it that way mostly because these rockers they turn. The rockers will move side to side and I found with the spring on them sometimes the rockers are not sitting flat against the cam lobe. They're actually sitting turned a bit. So you'll get where it touches on one side and it's loose on the other. And trying to get the feeler gauge in to get a proper reading is extremely hard. So I come up with a different way of doing it with a dial indicator that makes my life a lot easier and takes some of the guesswork out of it. We have our dial indicator all set up and we're ready to start checking our lash. I have my special tool for doing it. And if you come down in here and have a look, as you see, dial indicator is set up. It's set to zero on the top of the rocker. Now I take my little rocky tool, and I put it underneath, and I just lift up. And that takes all the play out of it. And if you lift it up, you see it's about 18 thou out. We want about 14 to 15 thou is our number we want due to the ratio of the rocker and some number crunching. I have my 13 mil and my 17 mil wrench so that we can adjust the rocker and follow me in. Get the wrench down on the bottom one. That is your main adjuster. They're always tight as hell. And then with that loosened, we can adjust this. And we can actually get a bit of an idea of where we're going with our adjustment just by watching the dial indicator. So now that we've come up a little bit with that, about three thou, we tighten this back down. It is a bit fiddly and sometimes it'll take a bit of work and a couple adjustments to get it exactly where you want. And make sure that you have that tight because you don't want that to come loose and back off because then you'll be taking it apart and redoing it all again. That has happened once. Now we'll check our work. We just reuse our rocking, rocking tool, we put it underneath and we lift. And it actually looks like I went a little too far. We're at, we're at 14, which from the number crunching is on the, uh, the low side of good. We're on a bit on the tight side. We'll probably leave it there. Now that you have one adjusted, you now go through and adjust the rest of your valves as the book tells you in the sequence needed. That's really all there is to this job, and if you do it right, it is more accurate, I find, than the feeler gauge, and this $30 little tool will give you way more precise and repeatable results. And I've been doing this on all the Lottas that I've had, which a cumulative mileage is about 100,000 kilometers with no issues, so this works quite well. Hopefully this helps your next valve adjustment go a little more smoothly.